Alec Murdoch murder case after Murdoch's lawyers accused court clerk Rebecca Hill of jury tampering and rushing them to return a verdict. Now, Hill taking the stand today after two jurors claimed that they heard her make comments about Murdoch's testimony. She denies any wrongdoing. I want to bring back our panel here, Mike, Barbara, Heidi, and joining us for this is Nima Romani, a former federal prosecutor who has been reporting on this case as well. So, Nima, let's start here with you. Uh, again, we heard the judge today say that the judge was not at all surprised by the you know conviction that the jurors laid down initially, and now denying this new trial, saying, "Look, the defense has four days uh, to lodge their objections." So, how do you see that playing out? What happens next? Well, the defense is going to appeal just like they did before the murder verdict, and and it's going to involve another issue as well, this prejudice issue. So the judge found that Becky Hill engaged in jury tampering. She found that she wasn't credible and that she engaged in misconduct. So the question is, did it affect the deliberations? And that's something that the appellate courts are going to have to answer. And let's not forget, Judge Toll used to be one of those appellate judges on the South Carolina Supreme Court. And of course, Murdoch is going to appeal the sufficiency of the evidence. Was there enough there for him to be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of killing his wife and son? And the judge, in really a parting shot against Murdoch, no pun intended, said that there was overwhelming evidence mm -hmm. of his guilt after her review of the transcript. So it's going to make Murdoch and the defense's appeal that much more difficult. In that affidavit, she said she voted guilty because she was pressured by the other jurors. Well, that's not enough to be misconduct. It was really Hill's testimony that had to have influenced her verdict. And although she said during testimony today that she was influenced by Hill, when cross-examined and pressed upon that by the judge, she said, well, her affidavit, where she said she was pressured by the jurors, that was more accurate. So the judge said, well, we're going to rely on Jersey's own statement those more accurate words. And that's why Judge Toll denied the motion for a new trial. And importantly, on the way out, she said that the evidence of guilt was overwhelming. That's something that wasn't mm -hmm. necessary for her ruling, but certainly something that is not good for Alec Murdoch. Right. Judge Toll went on to say, I'm not I'm not surprised by the, you know, the end conclusion here that that jury actually came to and actually went on to say that pressure from other jurors is something that happens sometimes. And so that that didn't really count. But also, Nima, uh, Judge Toll, you know, she brought up the book here uh, that Becky Hill wrote and essentially talked about how she was looking for some kind of celebrity in all of this. Oh, yes. And in talking about how Hill wasn't credible, now, the judge really talked about the book, the fact that the court clerk from a neighboring county testified that Hill wanted a guilty verdict. Learned about, you know, the four days the defense could essentially uh, lodge any objections they have, but also the original verdict, right, that original conviction, they can still, still appeal that too, right? Oh, no question. And Murdoch will appeal, and he did appeal, and actually went up to the Court of Appeal. But that appeal was dismissed because once the case is appealed, the trial court loses jurisdiction and it can't hold an evidentiary hearing like it did today. So now it's going to go back on appeal, and now there are two big issues to be appealed. The misconduct and whether Becky Hill was prejudicial or whether there's enough evidence to support the verdict. All right. Nima Romani and Rena Roy, thank you so much. You know, comments before she let everybody out of the courtroom today, she really touched on how seriously the jurors took this. And, and Nima, to you, uh, you know, when she talks about something like that, yet she also says that this one juror who said, you know, I was initially influenced, but then her affidavit says that she wasn't. And then she talked about how the jury actually influenced her decision. But Nima, the judge says that happens with juries all the time. Oh, all the time. And really, those jury deliberations are sacred, Kano. We can't get in there. And if they make decisions based on even the wrong facts or the wrong law, that's not enough. And you have jurors saying that, you know, maybe she thought Murdoch was innocent, but she was pressured by the other jurors. Those are her own words. That is not enough to overturn a jury verdict. Because if it was, think about all the thousands of verdicts that happen every day in this country. If someone is pressured and they return a verdict, that's just not enough to overturn it, Kana.
Right, there's a lot of bargaining going on in those, uh, those conversations. Mike, Barbara, Heidi, and Nima, our thanks to you, of course. So let's break down the judge's decision here and how big is this for prosecutors? Oh, and talked about the overwhelming amount of evidence that she thought the jurors had to look at when they made their ruling and wasn't surprised by that guilty verdict. Uh, and Nima, to you, the trial judge who presided over this initial murder case had to sort of step away from this case but is now considered a witness in this hearing wasn't on the stand though today. How might that impact another appeal by Murdoch? Well, it may because we know that obviously Murdoch is going to appeal the sufficiency of the evidence and this prejudice issue, issue that was discussed today. But really, it was Judge Newman and his communications with Becky Hill. We thought that would be an issue, or that mm -hmm. juror that was replaced from the panel, the egg lady. So these are a couple factual issues that weren't addressed at the evidentiary hearing. The judge. New judge decided not to put Judge Newman on the stand, decided not to question that juror that was dismissed. But again, these were arguments that the defense raised in their affidavits, raised in their motion, but the judge didn't squarely address. So even though um, she may have made the appeal bulletproof with respect to the prejudice and the evidence issues, this one is something that the defense may have a chance on. Right, and they also also talked about this juror Z, who testified on the stand that her decision to convict Murat of fatally shooting his wife and son was influenced by this court clerk, Becky Hill. But what they did was they went back to this affidavit, right, Nima? Where in this affidavit, she claimed, in fact, she was more influenced by other jurors on her decision. Yes, Kenan, it really was the juror's own words in that affidavit. That was determinative. So the juror sort of was ambivalent, and this is something that the judge said, but when pressed, that juror specifically said, my affidavit is more accurate. I stood by it. I was pressured by the other jurors, not influenced by Becky Hill. And I think it was those words that really the judge highlighted in saying there was no prejudice, even though there was jury tampering and misconduct, it did not affect the outcome in this case.